All right, folks, so today we're going to take a little bit of a look at some modeling software, and this modeling software is called SimNEC, and uh, let's see if we can take a look at about, and you can see that this is software that uh, was put together by a guy named Edward Harriman, AE6TY, and uh, we want to say thank you, and there's also some significant or substantial code uh, contributions from some other folks. AC6LA, we want to say thank you, and 5BA, I'm sorry, 5B4AZ. Uh, we appreciate it very much. Now, this is the latest version of a product that was called SimSmith, or some folks may say this is a fork or it's a new product based off of SimSmith, which has been a long time uh, freely available modeling tool, and this one is freely available as well. That runs on Windows, it runs on Linux, and it runs on Mac OS. Um, and it allows you to use a Smith chart to solve problems, impedance matching problems that you may have. Today we're going to talk about antennas uh, for amateur radio, and we're going to look at ways that we can modify impedance using some of the functions of this tool and modely, modeling uh, Pi networks, L networks, and T networks, which are typical things that amateur radio operators do. We're also going to look at some effects of coaxial cable or transmission lines, and I would encourage everybody to download and install this software and play around with it. It seems a little complex at first, but if you play around with it, you get used to it. I'm still getting used to it, but I wanted to put this video out there. I did have some requests from some of the channel supporters to do this. So the first thing I want to do is talk a little bit about this big old circle filled with circles. And this is a Smith chart. And uh, it's been around for a while, and it was put together and invented by a guy named Dr. Smith or Mr. Smith. I can't remember which, and apologize, I don't remember the first name. But it allows you to plot complex impedances and allows you to take a look at how um, your circuit is performing. And in this case, our circuit is going to be our transmission line, a generator like a radio, and an antenna. And I just want to talk a little bit about the layout of the Smith chart itself. Now, when we talk about impedance, it's more than simply resistance. And that's a mistake that a lot of new amateur radio operators make. Um, Resistance is purely resistive. It doesn't have uh, a reactive component to it like impedance does. So impedance is resistance plus reactance, and your reactance can either be capacitive or inductance, inductive. Um, and that changes based off of frequency. So as you rotate your dial from, I don't know, 14.1 to 14.25, the impedance can change, and that can change the way that your circuit or your antenna or your transmission line performs and can impact your amateur radio experience. So just real quick, when you look at this, uh, I'm going to call it the equator for lack of a better word, but right across the center of this circle, you have a flat line that goes all the way across. And this line is purely resistive. It doesn't have any reactants. So if you look over here on the left-hand side, we have two components at the top. We have L and G. G is our generator, which would be our radio in this case. And L would be our load, which is going to be our antenna. I have both of these set for 50 ohms uh, impedance with no reactance. And so that point is right here on the center of the chart. Now, the center of this chart is set to 50 ohms because that's what we use in amateur radio. Um, in the event that I wanted to have a 75 ohm impedance at my radio, which I don't, it would move this point here. And you can see that. Let me go ahead and set that back. Uh, actually, before I do, I want to point out that at the center of this, you see 75 ohms, not 50, and that would be our system impedance. Okay, let's change this back to 50. And then I can come over here and I can change the impedance of the load and we'll put 75 there. So you can see our system impedance or source impedance, sometimes referred to as Z sub zero, uh, is set over here at 50, but then our load impedance is depicted over here. And uh, let me go ahead and switch that back and we'll start playing around with this. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to maybe model my antenna a little bit. And I don't really know what the impedance of my antenna is right now because I haven't measured it in a while. But for demonstrative purposes, let's just go ahead and say, let's set this to 75 ohms. And we will set a reactance of 400. And when we do that, that goes into the top hemisphere of this circle. 
and you can see our blue dot representing that complex impedance. Now, the top part of this is when your impedance has an inductive reactance. Below is when it has a capacitive reactance. But really what this is, is 75 ohms of resistance plus 400 ohms of inductive reactance. Now you can see I can change this 400 ohms to negative 400 ohms. And then now our dot drops to the southern hemisphere of our Smith chart. And now it is showing a capacitive reactance plus our real resistance to give us that impedance. I know that's complex. I've got a couple of videos on impedance and I have one called basic antennas where I kind of go through this in a little bit more detail, maybe to help set the groundwork or explain that a little bit. So what I want to do now is I want to say, well, my antenna does have a hundred ohms of coaxial cable connecting my radio to my antenna. So what I can do is I can come down here and pick these blocks. Each one of these blocks represents a component and this is the one for transmission line. So I put that in there and then you can see that is making an adjustment here. When I take a look at this, this is a 45 degree phase shift. For a couple things we're gonna do, on the generator I have 10 megahertz and we're gonna be interested in 20 meters FT8. So that's uh, 14.074. So let me go set that as the, as the frequency that I want to measure or look at. And then I'm gonna come over here and put the same thing on my transmission line. And so what this did, it, it did a phase shift. It automatically adjusted for now it's 66, I'm oh, sorry, 63.33 degrees. So I can put in 90 there and I can get a 90 degree phase shift. And you can see that goes halfway around the circle. But really uh, what I want to do is come down and take a look at the overall length. This is automatically picking right now, 11.65 feet. And my coaxial cable is 100 feet long. So when you do that, you can see that I am starting to create some more reactants here, depending upon the wavelength of the desired frequency that I'm looking at. So when I take a, a look at this, um, one of the things I want to do is this is just using simplified coaxial cable. I can click on here and it has a whole bunch of different types of coaxial cable. And mine is RG8X, so 50 ohm. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to pick that. And then you can see that that changed a little bit too. Now what we're doing is looking at the path of impedance across frequency. What I can do is I can actually do a, a true sweep. Let me turn that on. And then I can see what my reactance is based off of frequency if I click somewhere in the circle. So by doing this, hopefully you can see that okay down here in the uh, corner. It's, uh, this is at 25.31 megahertz, which I'm not interested in, but it's showing that we have an SWR 4.2 to 1. Here is 10. I can just pick around and find different uh, frequencies. Also, there is a plotting feature. Um, we're going to take a look at this in a little bit. I want to come over here and I want to adjust my, free, my sweep. And let's just say, let's go from 12 megahertz to 15 megahertz, which should encompass the uh, band in question. And when I take a look at this, you can see that my SWR is higher than 1.8. Uh, I believe I can scroll up and I can see that at my desired frequency right now, my SWR is 5.7. And that's not what I want. I want to get a little bit of a better match. So there's a couple things that we can do. And this is where we get into our um, L networks, our T networks, and Pi networks. So let me go back to the Smith chart. And what I want to do is say that, well, my antenna, I want to have an SWR of 1.5 or less. So I can come down here into this SWR square change that to 1.5, and now I get a circle. Anything inside that circle is going to be 1.5 SWR. Um, if it's on the equator, then it would be purely resistive and resonance. resonant. If it's above, it would have an inductive reactance, and below it would have a capacitive reactance, which is normal. It's, it's very rare that you get something with zero reactance. So when I'm taking a look at this, one of the things I want to do is I want to get my antenna to be better matched. So I can go ahead and I can click on, let me go back to path. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to the path. We're going to take a look at this. And one of the things I want to do is I want to get my antenna here in the center. So let's just go ahead and attach an L network. And we're going to attach this one at the antenna feed point after my transmission line. So we're going from radio, transmission line, to matching network, to antenna. 
And then you can see that it automatically adjusts. We are at uh, 6.915 um, farads of capacitance and 3.654 Henry's or micro Henry's, picofarads and micro Henry's of inductance. And that gets us pretty close to where we want to be. So if I come over here and I click into the um, table as opposed to the Smith chart, I can click over here and I can see that my SWR, and maybe I'm a little bit off frequency here. And here at 14.97, I'm at 0.016 SWR. And then here is my reactance value. And that is be well below my 1.5 requirement. So what I could do is, is I could make a matching L network and I would put it at the end of my transmission line. And you can see that depicted here. So what I wanted to do is show, well, what happens if I put this at the radio input? And then you can see we have a much higher Q uh, value here, and I am at 1.078 SWR, and that allows me to make further adjustments if necessary. Now, this is an L network because it looks like an L, and you can rotate this L network to get different configurations. So here we would have a series capacitor and a shunt inductor. Uh, I can rotate again, and so first we have a shunt inductor and a series capacitor. And uh, you can see where we are on our chart. Um, I can go ahead and I can rotate again, and I believe this is the fourth. I think there's four rotations that you can do. We have a shunt capacitor, and then we have an inductor in series. And then I can rotate one more, and I believe this is back to the original configuration. If I want to get rid of this, I can just hit Control D while it's highlighted and it's gone. And then I go back to our original configuration. Uh, let me go ahead and put in some other components. What's nice about this L network is, is that it is in auto mode. Now I can take it out of auto mode and adjust this, for example. Let's say I wanted to reduce my inductance to 500 um, uh, nano Henry's. And then you can see that shifts my resonant point over to the right a little bit. Uh, I would do that if I was trying to fine tune in a particular frequency. Um, other things I can do is I can create this as a Pi network. And sometimes that will help me with better filtering. It might tighten my queue. It might widen my queue. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to throw a shunt capacitor in uh, in place. And when I do this, you can see that we've gotten more broadbanded in terms of our resonant point. But um, in terms of where we want to be, we're at a 2.8 uh, SWR. And I might want to adjust that a little bit. So I might come over here and say, well, what happens if I adjust my capacitor here to 500 picofarads? And what that does is it actually shifts it to the left a little bit, but brings my SWR down. Uh, maybe I want to take a look at my inductance and, and reduce this to 400 um, nano Henry's. And so that's getting me a little bit closer. Uh, when I take a look at my desired frequency, uh, here we are, 14.97. I can increase my number of data points from 100. Let's just do this to 500. Now allow me to be a little bit more granular. So I'm, my SWR is going up as I, as I move over. I actually have to move this. And that's not entirely what I'm, what I'm looking for. Uh, maybe I want to make an adjustment to this capacitor and see what happens here. Let's go with 200 picofarads. And that came down a little bit. So maybe if I add more, let's go to 250 picofarads. Well, that didn't really help me out. Um, another thing I can do, that, that would be a Pi network. Let me get rid of these. is I can go ahead and I can put in my, I can build these from scratch or I can use the auto L network. So what I've done is I put the um, L network back in place and maybe I want to make this into a T network. And so maybe I will just rotate this. So this way we have a series capacitor shunt inductor, and then I want to go and add another series capacitor. I can do that right here. Um, and you can see that there's been some changes there. Now, what I can do is I can adjust these values again, like we did before. Let's go 200 picofarad. And that gets us a little lower. Let's go with 300. Oh, that wasn't what we wanted. Let's see what happens at 150. And maybe I want to come over and adjust over here 
and I can go to 300. I'm just pulling numbers out wildly uh, just to see what would happen here. And so I'm starting to get down by playing with these adjustments and you can do the same thing to see if that is where you want to be or you can continue to make modifications or adjustments. Now, one of the things I did want to point out is, is that with this circuit, maybe I want to put it after my transmission line so I can go ahead and move my transmission line there. And then you can see my SWR goes up and I would want to make adjustments. But what I wanted to show was the effects of L t and pi networks i think we've covered all that i wanted to give a very high level amateur introduction to this software uh sim smith or sim nec at this point and I encourage everybody to install it what i'm going to do is i'm going to continue working with this software learning it and we'll be integrating it into more of our antenna design and modeling videos in the future if you have any questions, go ahead and post them below. Uh, I'll do my best to respond and provide the best answer that I can. I appreciate everybody for watching. Thank you.